Hey, welcome to uh, Combat Painter's uh, Tabletop Baseball channel for the winter time. And um, we are playing the Braves and the Astros. The Braves are in Houston, and it's going to be Bob Forsh versus Larry McWilliams. We are recreating the no hitter that Bob Forsh pitched in 1979. Now, <clears throat> what makes this a huge challenge is Bob Forsh's record, 11-6 and six with a 3.04 ERA. So he's not a guy with like a 1.52 ERA. Whereas you start a game and you know the guy's gonna, not going to give up a lot of hits. The odds of this happening again are not odds I would bet on winning um, if I were betting on recreating the event. So I would bet against what I'm doing. And, uh, and that's really what it's about. Now, uh, it's going to be the Braves are bringing up uh, the third baseman, Jerry Royster, Ron Hubbard, the second baseman, and Gary Matthews, the right fielder, against Bob Forsh, a right-hander, 33 years old. And before I start, I want to talk about my infield. We're playing, using Payoff Pitch, one of the games, one of my favorite games. And today I, uh, I got some information that clarified um, the infield in chart, which I, 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 I use, I have a tendency to use, and I feel comfortable using. I don't have a problem with it. And uh, I was having issues understanding it. Um, and now it was, it was clarified, so, uh, and it's very, very simple, and it works very, very well. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with it, so I'm glad that I'll be able to use that. So I have that printed out on a little bit of cardstock here, 110-pound cardstock, which I'd like to kind of get this on one side and that on one side and have on one page um, laminated, thick laminate, because I do have a tendency to use it, and it's pretty important, you know, when when that tying run is at third with less than two outs, I'd like to use I like to use the infield in chart. So um, I have it. I have a clarification from the designer himself, who really is a genius, and who really puts in tremendous work and has a beautifully uh, uh, fluid system. A smooth system that works very very well some great quality cards it has so many players and uh, now with the f uh, fast action cards you barely have to touch the charts so this is one chart there's two charts that I touched well actually there's three charts the infield in chart which I can go a whole game without touching the stolen base chart which I will grab once or twice a game and then the other one is the rare play chart which I will also grab once or twice a game so really I mean I can go a whole game without grabbing the the uh, infield in chart bases loaded you have the bases loaded and you have the non bases loaded I love that binary right for dummies like me anyway um, so great. So I don't always use the infield in. So you can go with. I mean, if it's a six to zero ball game, I'm probably not doing any infield in for that game. Let's say you know seven to four ball game, and where they come up with a couple of runs, the losing team comes up with a couple of runs towards the end. Probably not doing any infield in. So there's a lot of games where you're not playing infield in, but rare plays on a double zero will pop up. And I'm using the modified version of that. It's a more extended version of that. Um, of, of the 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 uh, the, ha the um, uh, game um, uh, rare play chart it's got more results um, and then I am uh, what else am I doing um, the other one was what uh, the char oh, stolen base chart stolen base chart which is very very simple but I want to have it in a, a really easy to, to manipulate Rather than a big page of 11 and a half or 8 and a half by 11, I like to just get that uh, stolen base chart in a small, like 3 by 5 or something a little bit larger, just so I can have it handy and whip it out like like uh, Doc Holliday in um, 
in, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know that movie Tombstone. Anyway, all right, let's get started. I'm gonna roll two d six for Ken Forge to find out what is what. It's one thing we're in the Astrodome, and the Astros have that crazy uniform, the tricolor uniform. So I love this game because first you go through the picture a lot like Status Pro. I really feel that games need to go through the picture first. Heresy, I know. Blasphemy, I know. Um, but I really feel strongly and more comfortable in a baseball game. I mean, my son is a, uh, is a pitcher. And uh, I know that he controls what goes on um, before anything else happens. So anyway, all right, there we go, 10. And that's going to be a tough out. That means there's no possibility of a hit. All right, so let's see, a tough out against a right-hander, Jerry Royster, third baseman. He batted uh, 274, not bad, versus righties, a 46. A 46 is going to be a hit, but... Since it's a tough out by Ken Forsh, it's going to be an out. I, and I don't remember what they said, what kind of an out it was going to be, uh, but I'm going to make it a... Wow, wait a second. Yeah, 58 strikeouts in 177 innings pitched. Hmm. So I don't remember the rule, but I'm just going to create an out for him right now. I'm gonna create an out. It's gonna be a ground out, six to three, and I'll, and I'll. This is the first time I'm using that rule. I've seen it discussed, but I didn't really pay attention. So anyway, one away. Ken Forsh has the no hitter intact with one uh, after one batter here in uh, the Astrodome against the Atlanta Braves. It's uh, Glenn. I call them Ron Hubbard. Uh, when I when I was inputting, you know, on on my right I have I score and I'm using that and I I put I call them Ron Hubbard, and he's uh, Glenn Hubbard. So let me write in Glenn Hubbard here. Glenn Hubbard. There we go. All right, done. Save. All right, Glenn Hubbard, here's the pitch, and it's a 10, again, a tough out. A 61, a tough out 61 is going to be a fly ball to right. Two away now. And batting third is Gary Matthews, the right-handed hitting center uh, right fielder for the Braves. And that's a six, that's ballpark. Off Forsh. Ballpark on a right hander in the Astrodome is one to eight. <laughs> and that's a 86, so it's an in play. In play is going to be a one to 30, is going to be a hit. And that's a 16, and the no hitter is done. The no hitter is done. It's a ball hit up the middle and through to center field for a single. So Gary Matthews singles. He had 18 stolen bases. We're going to see if he steals, and he does not. I love payoff pitch. Very cool cards. And uh, Ken Forsh looks in for the sign. Jeff Burrows, right handed hitting left fielder. And that's a five, so that's in play. In play is a 25. And in play 25 is going to be an out. Oh my goodness, an out. And then play 25. This is going to be a line drive and caught by Craig Reynolds at short. Okay, so that's the end of the top of the first. And uh, the Astros, I'm sorry, the uh, Braves break up the no-hitter. With two outs in the top of the first. <laughs> We're replaying Ken Forsh's 1979 no-hitter. And it's Terry Pugh. And that's a 7 in play. And a 52. And in play, 52. Larry McWilliams against the lefty swinging Terry Pugh. 
and uh, a lefty batter. So it's a, a seven, which is an in play 52, in play 52, and that's going to be in the out range. That's going to be a fly ball to left. Jeff Burrows, and he's there, and that's going to be out number one. Larry McWilliams to Craig Reynolds. He is a lefty as well. I go, ah, huh. Did not know that. So I'm correcting that in that uh, in uh, I score as we as we speak. 51. So it's an eight. Tough. 51. And that's going to be a ball hit hard up the mill and through under the glove of Pepe Frias, the shortstop. That's right. That's what I said. Pepe Frias. He's a shortstop, and I misplaced him and had to spend about half hour looking through him, looking for him through all the cards, all the teams. Cesar Cedeno, right-handed center hitting center fielder. Larry McWilliams, the pitch, and it's ballpark. On a righty, it's one to eight, 35. That's gonna be in play, in play, 23. Oh my God, and that's gonna be a hard grounder into left field, runner on first, advances one base. So runner on first, advances to second base. Craig Reynolds stops there. And we have Bob Watson, right-handed hitting first baseman. McWilliams, that's a five patient, a patient 12. It's a base on ball, so the bases are now loaded. Bases are loaded. Bob Watson walks. Now Enos Cabell batted 276 versus right-handers and 264 versus lefties. He has three home runs on each side, but double the opportunity, uh, when almost double the opportunity when it comes to hitting on the left uh, against left-handed pitching. So that's a 12, that's in play. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. And Cabell, an 89, an in play 89. It's been a ground ball to shortstop. And we roll the 12, so that's gonna be an RBI ground out, six to three. And the Astros now lead it one to nothing here in the bottom of the first. Next is going to be Art Howe with two outs. Bob Watson is at second. Cesar Cedeno is at third. And it's Art Howe. Howe versus lefties bat at 260. And that's an 11. That's defense. Defense uh, 0 7. So defense 0 7 is going to definitely be an error. And it's an error on the catcher. Now, what kind of an error? We're going to take a peek. We look under error, catcher, one base error on the catcher. And Cedeno comes home. Cedeno comes home. Advanced. And then held up at third. And then held up at first. So we have Art Howe on a first and Bob Watson on a third, two outs, and it's Jose Cruz. Jose Cruz, a lefty, swings from the left side. And Jose Cruz batted 233 versus left handers. There's not much of a threat. See what happens. A 42. Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. And that's a that's an eight, tough, and then a forty-two, a tough forty-two. Is versus the left. He's going to be a strikeout, high hard one gets him, swing for out number three. So the Astros pick up two runs in the bottom of the first, and we have a long way to go here. It's Mike Lum, a lefty. And we're going to switch him over because we have him down as a righty. It's a pitch from Ken Forsh. 
that's a 7 in play an 86 and in play 86 and that's going to be a ground at a second Art Howe up with it and over to the first baseman Bob Watson for out number one we got Dale Murphy right hander and that's a six ballpark a ballpark 14 a righty that's in play righties are not going to hit many home runs here and that's a 60, an in-play 60 versus a righty takes us to the out range. And that's going to be a fly ball lifted to right. Terry Poole, he's out there. And puts it away. Two outs. And that's a seven in play. And Barry Bonnell, 31, an in-play 31. And that's right outside the hit range of 31. It's going to be a pop-up to the right side, excuse me. And that's going to be Watson calling for it. And he makes the catch. So the side is retired. We go to the bottom of the second. 2-0 Astros. Larry McWilliams, who uh, was 3-2 and two in 13 starts with a 5-5-6 ERA, is going to face... Alan Ashby, the catcher, the pitcher, Bob Forsh, and then Terry Poole, the right fielder. And uh, we rolled a 46, a 46, I'm sorry, that's a, that's a 10. In play, 98, and in play, 98, it's going to be an out fly ball lifted to left, Burroughs. Pitcher now, who's a 5. In play, in play 81. And that's going to be a ground that is short. Pepe Frias throws him out. Terry Poole, lefty, 7 in play. In play 0 7. And that's going to be a line drive base hit to right for Terry Poole. Terry Poole has good stolen bases. So he's going to attempt to steal, and he's a 5, and we just rolled a 2. So he's going to try to go. Now, he's a C. This is the chart I have to look, I have to use. He's a C, and I have to look at Dale Murphy, the catcher, and look at what kind of arm he has. Because I don't write any of this stuff down. And he has a 5 arm, so it's going to be, oh wait, let me go check that. In catcher. Or as catcher. Yeah. He has a 5 arm. So a 5C. And a 5C is... Where is that? Oh, a 5C is excellent. So he's an excellent base dealer in this situation. And we're going to pull a card. Excellent. And safe. Safe at second with a stolen base. So pool steals second. He's in scoring position with two outs. And it's Craig Reynolds, the shortstop. Here's the pitch from McWilliams. It's a six in, oh, it's a seven in play. And in play, 86 takes us to the out range. And that's a chopper hit to Glenn Hubbard at second. And he throws out Reynolds for out number three. Leading off in the top of the third for the Astro, uh, for the, the Braves is going to be Pepe Frias, the Pepe Le Pew Frias. <clears throat> and uh, here's the pitch. It's a six, so it's a ballpark. A ballpark ready 79 in play. In play, an 83 is an out, ground out to the shortstop, Craig Reynolds. And over to Bob Watson. One away. Next is the pitcher, Bob Forsh. It's a six ballpark. 61. That's in play. And in play. I'm sorry, the the uh, Larry McWilliams. And zero one and in play zero one. That's gonna be a ball hitting the gap, and that's gonna roll one to the wall. And hustling after it is Sedano. He throws it in, but McWilliams 
is on at second base with a one-out double. Next is going to be Jerry Royster. 10, a tough out, a 46. And that's going to be an out. <sighs> and I can't remember what that was. It can't be a strikeout because he doesn't strike out very many. I mean, he had 58 strikeouts, but you know what? Maybe it is a strikeout. So I'll give him a strikeout this time, and I'll find out in a little while. Tough out. That's kind of a new rule, I believe. I don't know where that is exactly. I, I, I go to the website, uh, Sideline Strategies Delphi, and I get a lot of information there. It's Glenn Hubbard with two outs. Runner on second. The pitcher, McWilliams, takes his lead. Seven. That's in play. And in play, 48. An in play 48 is going to be in the out range, and that's going to be a grounder hit right at Enos Cabell, who's up with it, and guns it to first base for out number three. Larry McWilliams <clears throat> against Cesar Cedeno. Here's the pitch, lefty McWilliams, and that's an eight. Tough, a 58, a tough 58. It's a fly ball to right, one away. Right there is Gary Matthews. An eight, tough, a 45, a tough 45. And that's gonna be a grounder hit right at Royster. He's up with it and throws out Watson, two away. And next is Enos Cabell. And that's a seven. That's in play 29 and in play 29. Oh, right outside the hit range. 29 is a line drive and caught by Glenn Hubbard at second base. In the top of the fourth, coming up against Ken Forsh, who's got a two-hitter going, is going to be Gary Matthews. Gary Matthews is one for one. And that's a five. Five is in play. An 82 and in play 82 is a ground ball to short. Craig Reynolds to his left and throws him out. Jeff Burrows, an 8, and that's patient, a patient 64, and that's going to be a walk. So Jeff Burrows walks. So he's on at first. Is he a threat to steal? No. Not a threat to steal. And it's, here's the pitch from Forsh. It's a 4, that's tough. And a 54, a tough 54, ooh, right outside the hit range as well. It's a fly ball lifted to left. And back to first goes Burroughs. Dale Murphy. Three defense. Defense 55. It's going to be range 55. Could be. Uh, it's a second baseman. I don't know what uh, Art Howe, let's see what Art Howe is a B range is second base. So that's going to be above that into the out range. So what kind of an out is it? That's what we're going to look at right now. We're going to look at the kind of an out it is to the second baseman. It's a line drive, double play A or B. And I think we said he was a B. Is that what we said? He is a B. And that's going to be a 4-6 double play so out line drive four six and what happens with the oh that was out number three okay so no need for the double play there you go all right no need for the double play and we go to art Howe in the bottom of the fourth against larry mcwilliams it's a two nothing astros lead here in 1979 it's, I believe, uh, April 7th, the day of his no-hitter. Four, patient. McWilliams, 67, a patient, 67. And that's going to be a ball lined into the gap. And that's going to roll to the wall. And Barry Bonnell and Gary Matthews chase after it. Bonnell with the throw into Hubbard. 
and to free us, and he's safe with a leadoff double. So Art Howe leads us off with a double here in the bottom of the fourth. Jose Cruz, the pitch from McWilliams, seven in play. In play 49, and that's going to be an outrange. It's going to be a grounder to third. And Howe's going to have to hold up at second on that one. Alan Ashby, the catcher at 10, in play 54. And in play 54, and that's in the out range. That's a fly ball lifted to right. Not deep enough for any movement on the bases. So Art Howe's going to hold up. There's two outs now. And it's the pitcher, Bob Forsh. And that's a five. That's patient. Patient. Patient uh, 29. 5, 29. And that looks like patient 5, 29. And that is correct. So that's going to be runner on second. That's going to opposite field liner into opposite field. I believe he is a righty pitcher, a uh, righty batter. He is. So he goes, he goes to right field. So uh, to right field, run around first advances, run around second scores. So it's a two out RBI for the pitcher. Forsh, and he's on at first. And it's Terry Poole. That's a six, that's in play, a 97 and in play, 97. It's a fly ball to right field, and that's out number three. So we're starting to move along in this game. It was dragging for a bit, but now we got started here. It's Ken Forsh facing ba uh, Barry Bonnell, the center fielder. And that's a 10, tough out, an 80. That's going to be a strikeout. I mean, there aren't many strikeouts in this game, so... And I don't know what his other numbers are. They probably took, number, they probably took strikeouts from there to add them here. But I believe it's a strikeout. A 10, another tough out. And that's an 85, and that's going to be a strikeout. So Ken Forsh is dominating with the strikeouts and that number 10. That's a 5. That's in play. An 82, an in play 82. He's a 9. In play 82, that's in the out range. That's going to be a hard hit ground ball right at Craig Reynolds, the shortstop. Over to first. Out number 3. We go to the bottom of the 5th. The Astros, the Astros are facing Larry McWilliams, and the Astros are up three to nothing. And that's a three. That's a ballpark, a 78 from a lefty. Wow, this is not a good home run hitting park. But uh, that's going to be in play, and that's an 83, an in play 83 against a lefty. That's going to be an out ground ball, second base. Cesar Cedeno stole 30 bases. Against lefties, he batted 262. And that's a four patient, a, an 11. A patient 11 is going to be a base on balls. So with one out, Cedeno reaches first. And he's going to try to steal with his 30 stolen bases. And no, nowhere close. So it's Bob Watson, right-handed hitting first baseman. And that's a nine. A nine is tough off McWilliams. A, a tough 68. That's going to be an out. That's going to be a fly ball to center field. And Barry Bonnell on his horse runs it down. Two outs now. And it's Enos Cabell, right-handed hitting third baseman. Also plays first base. That's a four. That's patient. He's patient there. And that's a 56. A patient 56 against a left-hander is going to take us into the out range. And that's going to be a fly ball to right. Gary Matthews makes the catch and next is going to be Ken Forsh on the mound for the Astros he's going to be facing Jerry Royster and that's a 9 in play in play 85 
In play 85 against a righty. That's going to be in the out range. That's a ground ball hit at Craig Reynolds. Throws him out. One away. Glenn Hubbard is next. Pitch from Forsh. Eight. That's patient. A patient 88. And that's going to be a ground ball again to Reynolds. Nice hop there. Two away. And Gary Matthews. That's a 7, and that's in play, and that's going to be a 17, and in play 17 is going to be a line drive base hit for Gary Matthews. He's on at first, and Matthews is going to try to steal, and 5, he doesn't because it's a 4. So Jeff Burrows now, and that's a 6 ballpark, 60, and we're going to go to in play at 81, and an in play 81 that takes it to the out range and that's going to be a pop up to the shortstop that's using the modifier sideline strategies delphi forum you can find out all about payoff pitch and uh joe bryan is amazing great customer service amazing quality with tremendous work he puts into tremendous he puts tremendous work into this so, uh, very impressed. Um, Art Howe. <clears throat> Art Howe is going to be up, stepping into the box against Larry McWilliams. It's a 3 nothing Astros lead here in the bottom of the sixth. And that's a 9. That's a tough, a tough 78. It's going to be an out, and that's going to be a fly ball to center. One away. Jose Cruz. That's tough, and a tough 88. And that's going to be a ground at a second. Glenn Hubbard up with it. And now it's Alan Ashby who's 0 for 2 on the day. And that's an 8. That's tough. And a tough 91. And that's a strikeout. Ashby down on strikes. Curveball got him. Oh, have I been seeing? I've been seeing Bob Forsh the whole time, and the guy's name is Ken Forsh, and I have him as Bob Forsh on the uh, on I. <laughs> okay, you guys must be freaking out. All right, driving you guys nuts, saying, "Hey, why does he keep on saying Bob if it's Ken?" All right, here's a pitch from Ken Forsh. And that's a three. That's defense. Defense 96. That's gonna. That's out of range for everybody. So, I'm gonna find out who. That's an out to somebody, and that's an out to the third baseman Enos Cabell. Guns it to first. One away. Mike Lum out. For the first out here in the top of the seventh, and now it's wheelhouse. Wheelhouse for Dale Murphy. Dale Murphy against a right. He's a 1-44, to so wheelhouse. And that's a deep drive to left field. And back goes Jose Cruz to the track, to the wall. Looks up. It's out of here. Goodbye, Dale Murphy. Connects with a pitch that I know Ken Forsh wishes he could take back. So it's a home run. It's a 3-1 to one ball game now. Barry Bonnell, 26-year-old right-hander. He batted 282 versus righties, a 7. That's in play, and that's an in play 74. That's going to take us to a fly ball to center field, and it's Cesar Cedeno. He's out there, makes the catch for out number 2, Pepe Frias. Pepe Frias is 0 for 2. That's a 6 ballpark. A 20 on a righty takes us to the in play, 52 in play, 52, and that's going to be an out fly ball to right. And right there is Gar um, right fielder. Right there was uh, Terry Poole for the out. So we go to the bottom of the seventh now. This game is really moving along. We're replaying the no hitter by uh, Ken Forsh. I was calling him Bob for three quarters of the game. I wrote in Bob for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know. Anyway, uh, uh, because Baseball Almanac, I don't think it has the first names. Somebody was, and, and, I, and there are reasons that I don't use Baseball Almanac, uh, because they don't have the first names on the box scores. They may have it 
uh, I don't know where they have it, but they don't have it on the box score. So I have to, I have to click like each individual player, which takes me to a new page to see his, his first name. And that's a drag. So anyway, I use baseball reference uh, so far, but I, I like the style and of Baseball Almanac, but I do not uh, like the uh, substance uh, so far. Unless, you know, I have to still learn how to maneuver it. All right, Larry McWilliams is pitching to Ken Forsh. I like to use uh, baseball reference. Yeah, well, I, I've used baseball reference pretty much. And uh, and some guys have been saying, no, man, no, no, you have to use baseball almanac. And I like baseball almanac. It's just, it, it doesn't seem to link me to the things that I need as quickly. Another thing that baseball reference does at the top, like when I want to use actual lineups, and I want and, and like not enough like let's say there's a complete game in this game, in the game that I'm actually playing, but I find myself in a situation where I need to use some relief pitchers. Well, I'll hit that like there's a little arrow that says next game, and it'll take me. <laughs> really? How how do you find? Hold on. And then I'll hit that little arrow, take me to the next game, and then I'll see relief pitchers, and I'll know who's on the roster, so I can use them the day prior. Negro League, I have absolutely nothing, I know nothing about, and I never have. Um, that's something that's totally outside of my, my circle of, of influence, if you will. So uh, it's Larry McWilliams to Ken Four, should say nine, a tough 43, tough 43, and that's going to be a strikeout. So Forsh down on strikes for out number one. It's going to be Terry Poole against McWilliams. And it's a 7 in play, a 48 in, in play, 48. That's an out. And that's going to be a ground at a third. Royster up with it, throws out Craig Reynolds. I'm sorry, throws out uh, Terry Poole. And now it's Craig Reynolds, left-handed hitting shortstop for the Astros. That's a 6 in play, 81. In play, 81 is going to be an out. Grounder to second, Glenn Hubbard. Flips it to the first baseman, Mike Lum, and uh, and that's all she wrote. We go to top of the eighth. Almost done with this one. It's a three to one game, a pretty good game. It's uh, Braves one run, four hits, one error, and the Astros three runs, five hits, no errors. And uh, Ken Forch is on the mound and stepping into the box is Larry McWilliams. And it seems that we are going to have to bring in a pinch hitter right now. A pinch hitter for Larry McWilliams in the bottom of the eighth inning leading off. And I have no idea who we should bring in because uh, let me see if I took any data and I wrote down any players. No, I was cutting corners. Let me see if I remember anybody who played in these games. Eddie Miller rolling office. No. So let me tell you who they have. And uh, I'm getting a notice about my uh, battery. Let me tell you who they have. They have guys named. This is the great thing about Payoff Pitch. It has a tremendous number of cards. And it's all for one price. Uh, one very reasonable price. Biff Pokoroba. They have him. He was a catcher. They have Joe Nolan, a lefty. This is a pitcher. Get him out of there. Bob Horner. He hmm, he played. He had about 500 at bats, so he played a lot. Bruce Benedict, another catcher. Daryl Cheney, Charlie Spikes, Eddie Miller, and uh, Roland Office. So we got a lot of choices. I just don't know who's who here. And I'm trying to get my laptop on my left. I have a a 10-inch iPad on my right with iScore. And on my left, I have a laptop, which allows me to go into the game and take a look at who played in that game. So I, I like to use the actual pinch hitters for that game. It, it puts me back in time. It sends me through that, uh, that time machine. It puts me into that time machine. It send, sends me back in time, and I feel like I'm reliving history by using those actual players who played, as opposed to guys that may not even be on the roster, may have been traded. I don't know because I'm not doing all that research. But if I look at who's playing, who played that day, I know that he was there, and I know that's what I would have seen. And it's a whole it gives me that whole feeling of of reliving history. All right, so I got all this information up now. 
All right, so now I'm going to pull up the 79 schedule for 79, uh, 19, 79. Uh, I can do Astros. Schedule. 79 Astros schedule. And then we're going to find out exactly who played in this game. Okay, it's taking us to Baseball Almanac, which is fine. And this was the seventh versus the Braves. And Ken Forsh pitched a, a no-hitter, a 6 nothing no-hitter. And for the Braves in this game, you have pinch hitter Office, Roland Office pinch hit. So we're going to bring him in. There he is. So he actually pinch hit in this game, and we're going to do that. Works perfect because he's a left-handed batter. There we go. So I'm going to have to write him in. Add sub. I score is amazing. Um, so Roland. Office. And he is a lefty. And he's in there. Done. Okay, so he pinch hits here in the top of the eighth inning for the Braves. And here's the pitch from Ken Forrest to the lefty Roland Office. Office batted 258 against righties. That's a nine, so that's going to be in play. In play, I'm going to look on in play against a right-handed pitcher. And that's a 0-2, and that's going to be lined into the gap, and that's going to roll to the wall. Cesar Cedeno is hustling after it, and he's going to get it back in. And here's a throw to second, and Roland Office is safe with a double underneath the tag. So he hits a double, a leadoff double. And now there's action in the Astros bullpen. Action in the Astros bullpen right now. And next is going to be Jerry Royster. Here's the pitch to Royster. It's a three defense. A defense 82. And no matter what that is, it's going to be out of range. So we know that's going to be an out. And it's a range. It's a shortstop. Makes a nice play in the hole. Throws and throws out Royster who's speedy by half a step. Beautiful play by Craig Reynolds to throw out Jerry Royster. A ball hit in the hole. And we're going to look at what kind of, because we have to look at this real quick. It was an out. Oh, it's going to actually, no, he goes to second base. It's going to be a fielder's choice. So we're going to back up. And Royster's up. And no, he's going to back up a little bit more. So he's going to hit. He's going to hit into a fielder's choice. Having some issues here. Getting okay, six to four, and that's going to be no, no, no run a third, run out run a second. Was, oh, he was on. I'm all confused. Okay, so yeah, the runner was on second, so the runner's going to hold, and it's going to be a six to three. There we go, six to three. Runner on second holes held up. There we go. Okay, so there's one out. It's Glenn Hubbard now. The pitch from Ken Forsh. It's a seven in play. A, an in play 67. That's going to be in the out range. That's going to be a ground ball to second base. Now, if Roland Office is a seven or more, he hustles over. No, he's going to hold on. It's hit too hard. Right at Art Howe. And Art Howe throws out Glenn Hubbard. And the runner at second has to hold up. So there's two outs now, and it's Gary Matthews. Matthews is two for three. So he's been a tough pill for Ken Forsh to deal with. And that's a six. That's ballpark. This could tie up the ball game. A 23 from a right-handed batter. No way. It's going to be in play. So in play is going to be a 28. And in play 28 is going to be... A soft blooper into left field, runner on first advance, runner on second advance is one base, and they're gonna hold up Roland Office, who is not did not score a lot of runs. And he kind of uh, misjudged the ball, but he should have been running uh, since there were two outs, but he kind of goofed on that. And uh, Roland uh, Office stops at third on the two out single uh, by Gary Matthews. Gary Matthews, that's his third hit of the game. So now we're in a situation 
where it's Jeff Burrows. He batted 209 against righties, um, and he's going to be stepping into the box against Ken Forish with the tying run on at first base. Here's the pitch. It's an 8. That's patient. A patient 75. Oh, and that's right outside the hit-by-pitch range. 75 is going to be a fly ball. Left it to deep center field. Back goes Sedania to the track, to the wall, and makes the catch for out number three. So, we go to the bottom of the eighth. The Astros are coming to bat. And the score is Astros 3, Braves 1. We're replaying the Ken Forsh no-hitter of 1979, April 7th. Um, so far, Ken Forsh has basically allowed six hits. The odds are of replaying a no-hitter are, you know, just probably equivalent to uh, getting eaten by a shark. Um, <laughs> and I'm not joking. Or being in a plane crash or something to that, or struck by lightning. Anyway, um, all right, Cesar Cedeno against Larry. Well, Larry McWilliams was pulled for a pinch hitter. So we are going to bring in an actual pitcher from that day with the Braves, and that was a guy named Skoke. And we're going to take a peek at where, where my, my, my Braves cards are. And these are the hitters. Ah, here they are. So let's see. That's one thing I really love about uh, Payoff Pitch, that they have, you know, they give you so many cards. Let's see if Skoke is in here. I don't know that he is. He may be in the fringe players. Let's see, Skoke. I'm going through these all these players. Skoke. Otherwise, I'll have to improvise. And look, there he is, Craig Skoke. He's a lefty. And he will be pitching against three righties. So we may go with a different pitcher right here just because of that. We're going to go for, with Divine. There he is, Adrian Divine. He's a right-hander. Makes sense, right? So I try to keep reason in play. and But the beauty of payoff pitch is, man, you get all these players. And, uh, and, and and the quality of the cards, I cannot say enough about these. I feel bad about touching them with my bare hands, and I have my little trusty uh, sleeves, card sleeves. I use them for APA. I use them for payoff pitch. They work perfectly ultra pro. They're cheap as can be. I bought a 1000 for, I think, $10 or something to that effect. And I'm going to show you how I use them right now. Adrian Devine, put them in there. Because he's a guy that you usually touch the pitchers because between innings you grab them. I'm also going to put Cesar, the players I really like. I start off with the players I really like. Like if there's a player I really like, I like Cesar Cedeno. I thought he was a cool player. I mean, he center fielder, had power, had speed. I like that kind of player. So anyway, those guys are protected. And uh, let's keep going here. We are... Let's give you... Okay, Cesar Cedeno is batting in the bottom of the eighth for the Astros. The Astros lead at 3-1. to one. It's going to be Adrian Devine, and we're going to write him in to I score. Adrian. And Adrian. Adrian. Okay. Sedeno. I'm sorry I had to do that. Please uh, uh, forgive me for that. All right. So it's uh, Adrian Devine comes on in. And, uh, and we're going to go back. Uh, ch -ch -ch. We're going to put Divine into that ninth spot. Offense, ninth spot. Rolling Office is in there. We're going to going to Divine in that spot. Boom. So Divine is in that spot now, that ninth spot. Okay, so here's the pitch from Adrian Divine to Cesar Sedeno, who's one for two. A single at fly out and a walk. And, uh, oh, that's a 7, so that's tough. A tough 61 from a right-hander. That's going to be in the outrange. That's going to be a pop-up. High fly ball to the left side, to the uh, right side, excuse me. And that's going to be Mike Lum right there. Mike Lum makes the catch. First baseman. Bob Watson, who's over for 2. And that's a 3. That's ballpark. And that's a 57. That's in play. And in play 85 is easy outrange ground ball to Pepe Free as that's short. He's up with it. Guns it the first and gets Watson, who I think tripped down the line because he was nowhere near first base on that. He may get a scolding from the manager 
for not running that out unless he had a tough time getting out of the box and maybe is injured or, or tripped up in some sort of way. So Enos Cabell with two outs. And it's a six. That's in play to Enos Cabell and 83. In play, 83. Takes us to the out range. That's going to be a ground ball to short. Pippa Free is up with it. Throws out Cabell, who can hustle down that line. He had 37 stolen bases. You know, the players in the 70s were not shy about stealing bases. A lot of them have 20 and 20 some odd uh, uh, caught stealings. You know, and these were uh, guys that that ran. They weren't they were they, they weren't uh, shy, bashful about running, regardless if they stole the base or got caught. Because I see a lot of guys with with 20 and above stolen bases. Um, okay, so here leading off the top of the ninth for the Braves, who are down three to one, is going to be Mike Lum now. Ken Forge going for the complete game. That's a five. That's in play. A 36, an in-play 36. It's going to be a ground ball to the first baseman, Bob Watson. He flips to the pitcher covering, and that's out number one. Dale Murphy, who's one for three, he's flied out, hit a, uh, a, a lined out, and then hit a home run, Dale Murphy. That's a 10. That's a tough out. That's going to be a strikeout. 0-2, and that's a strikeout. And there's two outs now, two outs, and the Astros are one out away from winning this 3-1 to ball game here in 1979. Uh, Ken Forsch did not replicate his no-hitter, but he is pitching a, a, a six-hitter. And it's Barry Bonnell, who's 0-3. for 3. He's flied out, struck out, and flied out again. And that's an 11. That's in play, and that's going to be an in-play 18. And that's hit hard up the middle and through underneath Craig Reynolds' glove into center field for a single. So the tying run is now at the plate in the uh, uh, form of Pepe Frias. We're gonna, Beal was a pinch hitter that they used. I don't know, or Bell. He's pr probably Bell is how you pronounce that name. He may not be here. No, he is not here. That, that seems like a guy that was very, very fringe. Uh, let's see, that was basically it. But I can go to the next day on top, oh, can I, no, I have to go out and then back in for the next day. But I will go to the next day to see if, who other, what other players they had pinch hitting or, or on the roster. Okay, so the next day is going to be the, 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 the eighth. And let's see. Uh, Nolan, a guy named Nolan, Joe Nolan is going to bat. He he played, so he's going to bat. And uh, Joe Nolan is going to bat for for Pepe Frias with two outs. We're right about to run out of battery. So we're going to write in Joe Nolan with two outs here in the top of the ninth. The Astros are one out away from winning the game by a score of three to one. Joe Nolan bats for the shortstop Pepe Frias. All right, so here's the pitch to Nolan. Ken Forsh looks in for the sign, sets and deals, and that's a seven. That's in play, and that's an 84. An in play 84 takes us to the out range, and that's a chopper to second base. Art Howe comes in quickly, flips to Watson, and the game is history. 4-3 for that last out, Ken Forsh replicates his victory over the Astros, not his no-hitter. And that's it for, for this game. I'll give you the line scores. The Braves had one run, seven hits, one error, seven left on base. The Astros had three runs, five hits, uh, no errors, and five left on base. Um, let me tell you if there's anybody who actually, you know what, uh, let me go back here. And I'll look for the um, the Astros if anybody really stood out in terms of hitting wise. Um, it was a uh, an error by the catcher that allowed a run to score early on, and a ground ball by Enos Cabell that scored another run, and then it was a a. 
an RBI single by Ken Forsch that scored the third run. So really, the, the winning run, the second run of the game, was scored on a, uh, an error by, by the catcher. Um, yeah, in that, uh, an error by Dale, by Dale Murphy early on in the game. So anyway, and a home run was hit by Dale, uh, Dale Murphy to make up for the run that he allowed to score. Unfortunately, the Braves could not muster any more than one uh, uh, runner across the plate. So that's, that's it for uh, this Ken Forsch no-hit uh, attempt to recreate. Um, I knew at the beginning, if you hear me basically looking into my crystal ball and predicting, I did say that the odds are of re replicating a no-hitter are like, I don't know what the odds are, but I know I'll probably get uh, a chewed out by a shark or struck by lightning, you know, or uh, that sort of thing before I uh, ever replicate a no-hitter. It's hard enough just to, to, to pitch a no-hitter just playing a whole season or thousands of games, let alone play one game and say, well, he pitched. Plus, Ken Forsh, I called him Bob for the first three, three uh, quarters of the game, um, was 11 and six with a three ERA, so it's not like he had a one point or a zero point, you know, 57 ERA where I'd be like, oh, there's no way he's going to give up more than two hits. Maybe I'll get lucky. No, the guy has a three ERA, so the, you know, the odds that he pitches a no hitter were just not, not, not realistic. So anyway, I have no idea what my next game is going to be. It's uh, right now. I'm going through a tough period. I'm struggling with. Uh, I want to play payoff pitch. I have all the cards out. I'm trying to figure out. I think I'm going to go to the love of my life, the uh, team that was just a, a mile from my home, my home growing up in Queens, Flushing, New York, at Shea Stadium, the Mets, my beloved Mets. Uh, they were always close by. I worked across the street from Shea Stadium. I used to ride my bike in Flushing Meadow Park uh, in my younger days. And uh, they bring a lot of good memories of, of, of those days. So I may do something with the Mets, maybe 10 days of Mets baseball for fun and for those guys that uh, I know a lot of guys like the New York teams and they have a big uh, fan base. Um, but I may also look at something, something else, something, uh, I don't know. So I'm going to spend a couple hours digging in, if you will, into what I'm going to do. There was only one no hitter that was pitched that year. In 79, it was Ken Forsh. I already did Thurman Munson's last 10 games, which was kind of like a downer and got me down. Uh, so I don't want to do that. Now, I know, uh, listen, it's hard for me to talk about which uh, 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 review. I don't mind giving an objective review of the games that I play. And I've been thinking about this, but I'm really not an expert or knowledgeable about like cyber metrics to say which game. And I know a lot of you guys are. You guys are more uh, uh, mathematics oriented. Um, and that's great. And I listen to you and I pick up information from you guys all the time. Um, do we, what if game with the Mets, what year? 1979. It has to be 1979 because these are the cars I paid for and I want to use them a little bit. You know, because I'm afraid I've, I've accumulated so many cards, man, uh, that I feel like guilty right now. I wrote a whole thing about it on uh, on one of the, the web pages. Uh, I think it was the Strat web page that I'm concerned that I'm not going to get to this stuff. I don't want to keep it. You know, uh, if I'm not going to play it, I, I, if I'm feeling like I want to play, just grab one season and just play it to death until the cards are torn apart. I love that when guys do that. You know, getting your money's worth and getting your enjoyment out of something that's so amazing. But anyway, uh, I was talking about, and this is important that I discuss this, about reviewing the games. Um, I'll tell you what things attract me to a game, playability, chartlessness, um, uh, realism, chartlessness, quality of cards. Uh, those are some of the three things and, and number of players per team and affordability. These are some of the things that attract me. These are some of the things that attract me to a game. So I don't like to buy a game and then have to start searching out for players and then have, you know, and make it like a quest. I mean, it's, it, that could be fun too. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, just for me, I want to get down and dirty. I want to start rolling as much as possible because my, you know, our time is finite. 
I, I don't want to spend a lot of time. Uh, I'll research for fun and as a hobby, you know, and for knowledge and to share, you know, the information and tidbits and anecdotes and all that. But I want to roll. I want to roll. And uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time looking for charts or I don't want to have to roll 10 times for every player. Like there's certain games which I don't play uh, 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 charts and dice. I'll play um, online because it's a 50-50 it's a, a game and it's got a lot of charts. Okay, uh, so I won't play that game. I do play it online. There's a bunch of leagues and, I, and I'm part of like six, I have six different teams and um, with my son and uh, we do that together. But uh, going back, okay, so, you know, I play Appa, I play Strat, I play Status Pro, and I play uh, Stratomatic. I love them all for, for different reasons. Um, Payoff Pitch Videos makes me want to buy it, and I don't need any more games. Exactly. Hey, you know what? I watched Payoff Pitch Videos from a bunch of guys, and guess what? Now I, I'm, I bought every season. Joe is an amazing guy. He's always like listening. He's always, you know, if you say something and it makes sense to him, and he'll be like, yeah, you know what? And he'll ma he's making corrections. He's a very, very nice guy, and he puts a lot of work into this. Al, I think you're going to like it. I mean, listen, Baseball Dave loves it. There's a bunch of us that really love it. I got into, I got into it because of them, because they were playing it nonstop. I mean, they got hooked. They became addicted. So that says something about the game. If those guys who are real, real heavy-duty, hardcore, experienced gamers felt comfortable enough to play it for a year, all right? And I think, you know, they just kind of felt like they were moving away from, from the other games, and they, they felt, we get nostalgic after a while, saying, oh, man, I really, I have all these cards for these other games. I got to go back to them, you know? And not that they're, again, like I said, they're all good systems. They all have their amazing qualities, you know, uh, APA, first of all, I'm very nostalgic about APA because I grew up on APA and I understood and I was able to play it. It was simple enough for a young kid to pick it up easy and I loved it. Uh, I, I'm not crazy about the pitching system and that's my real biggest kind of complaint about APA. All right. Um, but everything else, you know, I, and I also, hey, it comes mostly with 20 cards. You know, now, of course, at 120 bucks, yeah, you get the whole, you know, the whole thing. But you're talking about 120 bucks for a system that doesn't go through the pitcher. Where, you know, the pitcher exists, but unless you're playing advanced. And then that's a whole nother can of worms that I have to learn. And, and I'm working on that. I got the, uh, the boards, the Merino boards. All right, that's my APA review. review basically, uh, I mean, cost is an issue. And, and to keep the cost down, you don't get the cards you need. You can go online and you can make cards and all that's okay. But anyway, that said, I mean, Stratomatic. Stratomatic, I have tons of stuff on Stratomatic. Um, I, you know, Stratomatic is very, very fluid and it's chartless. APA is not as chartless as Stratomatic. Um, and uh, Stratomatic, you can, I can go uh, three, four, five innings without ever looking at a chart. And if I do, it's just real quick, probably an error because I play advanced. Now, I do use the, uh, the ballpark effects, so I've been doing that, and you jump to the ballpark effects, but that you can memorize pretty quick. It's like, you know, uh, uh, you know 1 to 11 is a, it's a hit for a lefty, 1 to 11 is a hit for a righty or whatever, 1 to 6 is, is a hit for... You remember that pretty quick, so that's pretty... Um, again, the thing that irks me about Stratomatic is the fact that not everything goes through the pitcher. So if I bring Mariano Rivera, and I mean, there's ways of explaining it, I mean, if I bring in Mariano Rivera, the next six hitters that he faces may roll off their card. So it's as if I had never brought in Mar Mariano Rivera. So, but you can say, well, you know, that could represent, and, and I get it, I get it. I still play strat, and I love strats, don't get me wrong. But I'm being straight up, straight for, uh, forward here with everybody. Um, and now, Status Pro, um, I really like it. I like it. It does things that other systems don't. It deals with like pass balls and 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 wild pitches, and it has. I like the the the, the BD, which is uh, some guys don't like that, but I think it's kind of cool. It gives guys who were clutch or drove in runs more than other guys an opportunity to drive in a big run. Okay, I like that aspect of it. Uh, I like the, the 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 clutch defense aspect of it. 
So it has little, little flavor, little uh, bells and whistles that I like. The thing that, and, and I do, and get, don't get me wrong, I do like card activated th uh, games. The only issue is I feel that they're not as uh, uh, complex and they don't give you the, the, the number of, of, of rolls or, or, or variety that rolling dice does. And, uh, and you have to keep on, a f uh, uh, you know, I can never remember. Um, you got to mix up the cards, okay? And you got to mix up the cards every two or three innings. And you should see, I'm a mess doing that. Dice Baseball does a good job. Yep. And I'm a mess doing that. I'm a terrible mess. Uh, I'm definitely not a croupier in, in any casino. Um, I'm sloppy and I'm all thumbs when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, mixing up the cards so and I can they I can't lift them up off the deck so I'm I, I use two hands one hand lifts them up the other hand grabs it it's hilarious that's giving me a lot of trouble now I can move these cards because they're 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 created on glossy um, glossy thick card and, and and they're easy to lift so I don't have any problem with these um, but again I think you're limited in the the number of the numbers that you can roll on cards because there's only like 108 cards or something like that and dice rolls are infinite right i mean and then you you know so that you have to keep on uh, f uh, uh kind of mixing them up so anyway talking about status pro now i love status pro and it's you know the great thing about status pro and i recommend it to a lot of people because for ten dollars you can get a whole season and if you live overseas, I have friends in Germany. I have another guy who's uh, right on here who's in uh, Asia. And he was telling me, hey, man, you know, what do you think? Well, I'm telling you that uh, I think that Status Pro is, is one great way to go. It's easy peasy to do. You can get everything PDF. So if you're living in Asia, if you're living in Germany, uh, if you're living wherever you're living, you can get everything delivered for a few bucks. You can print it all out, you know. And print out what you need and, and leave out what you don't need. And boom, you're playing ball and it's a lot of fun and it's relaxing and it's a distraction from the stresses of the world. And you got a bunch of guys behind you that are, you know, into it. Uh, and uh, and that's it. So I, I, I think I reviewed the four games that I played. Obviously, I'm playing Payoff Pitch right now. They're all great games. I have tons of stuff, too much stuff for all of them um, and I like them all for a reason and I dislike them for another reason now to be honest with you there's no reason I dislike payoff pitch um, the only reason I don't play it all the time is because I love the other games too so you know it's like having a family with four kids and you love them all and you want to spend time with all of them so you don't you know um, I love them all and uh, they're not perfect um, you know I, I don't know. There's, uh, yeah, I I can't find anything negative to say about payoff pitch. I I really like everything about it. It has uh, pitcher hitting cards, which I like. I'm not a guy that needs all these extra cards for pitchers who never hit. I don't need that in my game. I mean, I really don't consider a pitcher. You know, and, and it's close enough to get a pitcher that's a good hitter to get a hit once in a while, or a pitcher that hit a home run to hit a home run once in a while. But that's not a big part of the game. I don't think for me. It's just not for me. Some guys, they care a lot about that. I don't. Um, it's got lefty-righty. I got all the lefty-righty cards. Oh, another thing, I, going back to Status Pro, I really like that That even though you don't have a lefty-righty card, you can still have lefty-righty matchups in a real simple system where it, it, it switches some, some numbers. When you're a lefty batter faces a lefty hitter, uh, certain numbers on the lefty hitter's card are switched around, and a hit becomes an out. And it's such a simple uh, mechanism to replicate righty-lefty. Because you know what? Righty-lefty is not absolute. It's not like every time you bring in a lefty, that lefty is going to make out. Or every time you bring in a righty, that righty is going to make out. So there's no reason to play it as if it's absolute. So sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. You never know. That's how I feel about it. That's my personal understanding and vision and, and perspective on it. So... Uh, I just wanted to mention that, and that's it. I mean, I, I did the, the review for the four sets. Now, one negative regarding uh, 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 payoff pitch, to be perfectly honest, it's a heavy package. Heavy-duty, heavy package. So if you live far away 
or you know if you live in Canada if you live in England or if you live in Asia or Australia uh, you know you're gonna have to dish out probably 50 60 bucks to get this thing delivered because it's heavy duty they're high quality cards and there are a lot of them and that's the reason I love it and I'm getting every single set that he puts out slowly but surely he's putting out four or five new sets now coming in the next few months 1985 or 84 is one of them and I love that because Doc Gooden had an amazing 85 season, but I think he was even better in 84. And I want to replay that using payoff pitch. So anyway, I'm going to sign off right now. I've been on here for a while. It looks like 70 minutes. That's an hour and 10 minutes. So uh, I hope I, I, I gave you guys a good game. 3-1 to one final score. Ken Forsh wins it, beats the Braves, and uh, the loser, the loser is going to be Larry McWilliams, the left-hander for the Braves. Yes, I have 1977, brother. And uh, 77 is one of my favorite all-time seasons because that's when I really spent a lot of time. Thanks, man. Dan, hey, Dan, Dan you're there. Yeah, I was trying to help you out on this. But 1977 is the year that I think I spent the whole summer uh, watching, you know, uh, baseball and reading the sporting news and baseball digest and reading the box scores in the daily news and the New York Post locked in my room. I don't think I came out. My parents